Hey everybody, a Texas Stroker here, Lance's Performance Shop, LoneStarMoparty.com. We are back for more action in the Ram Revival, where we left off. Uh, we fully decked out our Hughes Big Gulp throttle body, we mocked up the Hypotech fuel rails, and we of course needed to build our crossover line. I was missing a few fittings, so I've picked those up. I'm going to try to walk you through this in phases. This will be my first ever PTFE line, uh, sort of making the move over from straight up AN stuff so we'll see how that goes but uh, some of the things I have rounded up I've got my typical AN hose cutters here the channel lock code blues bought those to do battery cables that's not something I do all the time um, kind of sacrificed them you know it's it's pretty rough going through you know stainless braided line even if you get the black nylon you know there's stainless braid inside of that so um, I kind of feel bad about it, but at the same time, I've done it. I have these NWS ones to try. My plan is to do one side channel lock, one side NWS. Why? Because, again, it's PTFE. So the PTFE part, these should just cut it like butter. It's the outer line. It doesn't have as much braid, I don't think, as a typical AN line. So we shall see there. The Knipex pliers wrench, you're probably thinking, like, hey, what's, what's going on here? And why are there pads on it? Well, this is something I've been doing for quite some time. I don't know that I've done much of it on video. Uh, I do have dedicated specialty stuff. Nothing fancy. <laughs> Believe you me. I've got the adjustable of six, and I'm pretty sure I have an eight somewhere, but it could have been borrowed and not returned, uh, because it wasn't where I thought it would be. But anyway, for what we're doing today, I just need the six anyway, so that worked out okay. Uh, the braid on the inside, when we fray that back, there's going to be little streamers of stainless that I'm going to want to cut. These are funky little offsets. These were dirt cheap. I mean, I'm talking like 10 bucks, little v off 15 degree offsets. I was thinking they would be really nice to cut because I can hold the hose and uh, you just kind of get better access. You know, it's more comfortable in coming in straight. So we'll see. Could be mistaken there. Uh, the Stav Villas are just holdovers from last time. The specialty stuff past the AN wrenches, I've got my Earl's uh, vice jaws back there. They don't really work well with my vice, but you know, if you clamp it down, they kind of do. <laughs> so, uh, this also right here, a little Gador drift punch. The PTFE line that I bought, again, this is from Hot Rod Fuel Holes. We have a standalone on that. When they cut this, it's very apparent to me, let me find the other end, that they cut it with something like this because it's collapsed a bit uh, they didn't really you know like take the time to push it back out and for good reason I mean the odds of someone buying a three-foot piece and using it you know not really the case it's more of a deal where you buy the size that you need that covers the length or the run that you're wanting to cut so you know and if you needed the three-foot piece you probably buy more right so what I've done though is I was playing around off camera trying to find something that we could use to actually kind of fill this back out. When you cut, as you might predict, it puts a lot of pressure on both sides as it collapses. And then since that's a plastic liner essentially, it deforms it, it collapses it. It's not cylindrical or round anymore, right? So this little uh, drift punch here actually fits quite nicely. And the cool thing is the downside to using a screwdriver or a Torx driver, you've got, you know, something that might bite on the end same thing with a center punch you're probably okay but this is just a nice you know non-aggressive end on it so i figured we'd give it a go uh let's see here i'll try to walk you through all of my fittings what i have elected to utilize for my fronts is going to be a fregola i'll show you why as we get to it i'll kind of take it step by step so we don't rattle off part numbers and then go missing for a while uh, but right here, this is their part number, 481 for us again. Fregola doesn't send me checks, okay? That's what I picked based on the colors it's made in America. I want something quality, something that's going to last. Fits the bill for what we're doing. Plus, most importantly, it's an O-ring plug, and that's what we need for this fuel rail. So this part number right here, if I remember or take the time, I'll have it linked for you should you be doing the same thing. But uh, it's got a much smaller head than the ones I've got from Summit. You know, I've got like a different blue from Summit. We've got uh, their nickel finish from Summit. Um, neither is really objectionable, but in the front we need to plug it. And so this is what I've elected to use. The other one I think is in there, which is good. And then these suckers right here, uh, I believe this is the one I need. Part number, dun -dun -dun. it's not really focusing for you, but 495-100, there we go. 
this is an o-ring fitting essentially where the o-ring seats back here we're going to have that in the back of our fuel rail this side right here will come out traditional you know anptfe we're going to come in and we're going to have these 90 degree fittings which you can see again in the hot rod fuel hose video and then that will run into our line went with the blue hash because i just think it's going to look cool and that's about it so we'll go through all that again step by step as we go that's a quick little overview for you and uh without further ado we're just going to get right into this all right so this is not technically the greatest shot for you but if you pay attention to the left side cap which i'm spinning by hand and the right side cap which we're now pointing to you Granted, that'll flip when it's in the truck, you know, left and right. But whatever, for all intents and purposes of what we're looking at, there is a subtle difference here. This is the Summit cap. This is the Fregola cap. And the Fregola has a much smaller profile than the Summit. The Summit, you almost have points where the hex sticks out to the top, you know, like a radius of the fuel rail. Whereas the Fregola is totally recessed. They both fit fine. They would both function and cap and keep fuel from just spraying out forward towards the radiator. But... For aesthetics reasons, we kind of like the Fregola, you know, form factor. Case in point right here, this little dash six wrench, and it's from Summit, by the way, too. So note, I can't, like, grab it. We can turn it on landings, but it doesn't, like, seat down. Whereas on this Fregola, you can actually get it to seat. See how it's, like, fully recessed there, and you can tighten it? Makes sense, since that's a dash six plug, <laughs> you know. Again, right here, we just, it's a little bit too big and it's not gonna happen. So uh, that's another selling point of our Fregola, the Knipex, just for anyone that's going this route. We're gonna go old school here because we're using AN after all, right? So uh, three quarter to one inch is essentially legs all the way open, one inch closed, three quarter. And that's gonna allow me at least over here on the Summit one to come in and get a good grip. And as you can see, again, the beauty of this, if you're using like a regular open-end wrench, or even the pliers wrench, in and of itself, you probably won't tear the fitting up too bad, but if you do, you're going to take the anodized coating off. It's not going to look that great. That's why people use aluminum wrenches, you know, softer material, right? So same thing here. We're using a more robust tool, but with the protective jaw pads, this is just one of the many uses I have found for them. So uh, with that said, it's a little overkill right now. We're only going to need those when we tighten it down, but let's get this guy out of here and I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. So we'll thread the Fregola out now. Keep getting texts from uh, friends downstate. Uh, so where's the o-ring for this guy? That's not good. <laughs> Got a problem we're going to have to figure out. So, uh, Case in point, again, Summit in the left hand, Fregola in the right. And if I get this square, you know, where like it's a flat line across these two pieces, check it out when I flip to this side. Do you see the difference? Very noticeable. It's just a smaller profile for some reason. So I'm going to go uh, hopefully be able to track down the O-ring for this one. because That's sort of important. And uh, then we'll get these tightened down on the front side. All right. For those of you curious, we did manage to find the O-ring. It was in the package because, again, we just mocked this up. This is totally kind of overkill, but I've got some assembly lube. And uh, we're just going to come in. It's probably not focusing, but I'm not too concerned because you're not missing much. But you get the idea, just put a little light coat. It's probably best to smear it with your finger. And we're gonna come in always, always, when you're dealing with aluminum, really anything. I don't care if it's steel or titanium or space age or cheap. Start things by hand, and you're not gonna strip it out. You'll be, you'll be thanked by people that come after you. But uh, yeah, we'll get that in place. Now keep in mind with Fregola, if there was any one downside is that they put their initials FPS, you know, Fregola Performance Systems, I believe, on all their stuff. So if you're like wanting it super clean, you don't want that visible, you might have to clock, index your fitting, if you will. That's again, kind of like next level stuff as I run back over to the table. Um, having never really done fittings like this, I'm not exactly sure how tight these should be. <laughs> so we're just going to come in. This is pretty tight. I mean, I think the O-ring is fully seated at this point. I honestly prefer the pliers wrench over, you know, the AN wrenches, but that's another story for another day. But that right there, not your greatest angle with all the color wash out, but that is our front 
fuel rails capped with our Fregola o-ring fittings. Alright, so back to our expensive wood work surface here. <laughs> and, uh, I'm not saying that sarcastically. This is worth a lot of money now, ironically. That said, another forgotten tool, the little NWS scissors. I love these things. They cut through the plastic really easy. It gives me a clean cut. That way, if we change our mind on a fitting or whatever, we can put it back where it belongs. That way it's bagged and tagged already. You can put it in storage that way. But back here, for both of our outlets, if you will, on the fuel rail towards the back by the distributor, whatever you want to say, this is what we have from Fregola. The missing piece right here, the o-ring. It's going to go there. This then will be like a conventional A inside. What the part number is on this one is going to be 495 100 you can see it right there and uh, again that's the same thing in the bag the o-rings actually do come loose as you can see there I'm sure there's some reason for that i couldn't tell you what it is but essentially these will thread into the back of our fuel rail and then in my case we're going to take this fitting and it's going to come on and that's of course where we're going to run our crossover hose so before we get into this let's get these installed all right so new angle for you again this was just kind of a placeholder also seen if i happen to like the nickel versus the blue which actually does look pretty good but we're going to pull our little summit caps just kept dirt out of the rails while it was sitting here waiting on fittings to show up i've gone ahead i have lubed these uh little uh, orb fittings Got the O-rings on, and all we're going to do is thread them in again. Uh, common sense would tell me that we run these in, and uh, we want the O-ring to seat uh, sort of into like the counterbore, right? So that's what I'm going with. Uh, if I turn out to be wrong, well, we'll... <laughs> We'll hopefully catch it before there's a fire, right? So, uh, same thing over here. We're just gonna start this sucker. And again, bear in mind if you're, you know, super OCD, index these. You know, you might do like a dry run or something. Like I've got the FPS clocked off there. Here it's not visible. Similarly, if you want it prominently displayed and, you know, whatever, whatever your goal is, keep that in mind. Now I've got the uh, little pliers wrench here. Really not much more I can go past where I had it, so uh, again, I'm assuming since my o-ring is seated we should be golden, but man I sure like using this better than, it would be even better if I equipped a smaller pair. This is the 10 inch, which would be great for like dash 16 stuff, one inch, you know, variety, but for the little guys, you know, maybe like a seven, seven inch pliers wrench would be great. Uh, but yeah, that is there now, so what I will do is introduce this back to you. Again, think back. <laughs> Hopefully I've released the video, because I made it a long time ago. This is a little AN, uh, or PTFE fitting, I should say, I picked up from Hot Rod Fuel Hose. And what we're going to do is have this in place, and we want to run our crossover hose from A to B. Now, in order for me to know how much hose to cut, the ideal thing to do is, you guessed it, have these in place so we can measure. Uh, now, keep in mind, you don't necessarily want to cut the shortest distance because you have to factor in, you know, like arc. Uh, really common sense will get you, get you going. Now, where this differs, being PTFE from a typical AN fitting, when I take this off, you see the ferrule, right, or the olive. <laughs> And so that is aluminum. You will destroy it if you are so inclined. So we're going to set that down. And this is sort of what's special about the PTFE deal. See how nice and straight and simple that looks? Well, for all intents and purposes, it is. But what I want to do is get this on, kind of get it clocked where I want it. We're not necessarily going to go straight 90 to 90. We want to put a little arc in it also for the sake of our plug wires, right? And then we're going to measure from this landing pad back so we hopefully get the correct length of hose cut because this stuff's not cheap. So let's go ahead and get these threaded on and see what we think. All right, so we got these threaded on. I spent a lot of time trying to index that where I could have the hot rod on the uh, PTFE hose in show. Could not make it happen. So uh, maybe we'll get back to that. Maybe I need to index the whole assembly. But what I have here is just some gray 16 gauge wire. And that's because this is sort of a funky... It's not necessarily even, you know, like if you notice when we put the throttle body on, it's almost like there's a rake to it. Uh, it's a flush surface, you know, but the intake just seems to sit a little different. Obviously, that then applies to your fuel, fuel rails and everything. So, I've cut this sort of as like my mock-up. And if I kind of seat that down there and there, it's probably super hard to see that. But I think you can kind of where my thumb at, thumb is at, get a feel for it. 
Again, tripod is just a little too short for this. Uh, but that's what I've done because then I can go end to end and I can make a cut in our PTFE. Again, this is all I'm using it for currently in this project. I was going to get a feel for it, see how I like it, all that good stuff. And uh, this will let me do that. We can practice a cut. We'll see if we like the end they cut. If we screw up or we want longer, we've got material to do that. If we cut too much, which is always better, uh, we can just trim it accordingly. Uh, again, I'm not quite sure how it shapes. Never worked with the stuff or anything. So this is fairly tight. But, uh, that's probably the best way to do it. I wanted to keep the ORB fitting isolated. I didn't want this to be like a one-piece swing, number one, that gets real expensive the more complex the fitting. But number two, uh, that way, you know, like if I needed to service the hose assembly, this stays put. We just take this end off, go to town. So anyway, I'm going to take this, we'll translate it to our PTFE, and we'll try cutting it maybe with the NWS stuff first. All right, so I finally found my masking tape. I start cleaning things up, and the masking tape's not where it's always been when it wasn't where it should be, and it just slows me down. But uh, right here, uh, this is uh, what uh, Hot Rod had on the uh, hose, uh, presumably, when they cut it for me. And then here, we've got kind of a little bit past. You want that, theoretically, to be the midpoint. It's kind of irrelevant. Uh, but I probably need to cut about here. I'm going to go ahead and scoot it back now. No idea if this is going to work. I've not used these yet. And we're going we're gonna to find out. So these are from NWS. <laughs> we're just going to go right into the sweet spot here and we'll try to get the halfway point of our hose so you're witnessing this with me again this could be catastrophic fail it could be super awesome and the greatest hose cutter ever so oh boy yeah that's collapsing down isn't it <laughs> so we're popping knuckles but we're not making headway I'm going to go ahead and just because, again, I've never cut PTFE, we're going to see what my old faithful AN cutters do. And I'll try to one-hand this mess. Put that in place. Again, now NWS did soften this up, but we'll see what the channel log does. Okay. Made the cut. Probably not the cleanest thing ever. <laughs> we're, we're stuck on that side. Okay, so couple of things to note. Number one, I should probably buy myself some, some bigger shear or something dedicated. See how that's flat? See how this is flat? And then see how this end that I manipulated with our Ghidor uh, drift punch is round, rounder, I should say. Let's watch the magic happen. We're going to go ahead and grab this drift punch. We're going to insert it in. And again, we'll just drive it home basically to where the gold starts. I can already feel the feel the hose kind of forming back. We're gonna pull this out, twist and turn. Beautiful. That is quite the difference. This actually looks a little bit better than what they did. So their tape has like a ace number twenty something on it, <laughs> and then uh, mine is just blue painters tape. So. There it is. The hose looks fantastic. That's probably a little longer than we need, but I'm not sure yet because we haven't test fit it. That said, pay attention. I told you earlier, you're going to need gloves. If I didn't, now you know. I <laughs> know it's half the battle. Alpha gloves, I have a link in every video description. I make nothing off of it, but you save 20% off of your purchase, so uh, feel free to go to town there. But basically, everywhere you see something that looks like it's a metal thorn, it is. That's your stainless braid. When you're sitting there trying to drive this onto a hose end, it will poke you. And uh, it's not the most painful thing in the world, but it's also not very pleasant. So. What we need to do is basically dig back a small flat blade screwdriver is probably ideal for this. We want to get that braid and the woven material away from our plastic liner so we can slide down one of these little uh, ferrules. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab the tool of choice and see how it turns up. Notice anything that wasn't here a second ago? If you said the blue tape, you're correct. And man, I wish I would have filmed this because... I had that wrap so tight, I thought, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, loosen that so I can get a better dig at the material. And boy, howdy, it just unwound like a crazy thing. So, got a small flat blade here, opted to go with this one from uh, Vit. It's just a standard Max Pro, not the Max Pro Plus. <laughs> I'm going to peel back on the stainless. 
and uh, I would show this to you but it's much easier if I actually look at what I'm doing and don't have to go through the tripod and camera you should have a feel for it as soon as I complete the task and like I said I've never done PTFE so we could botch this it could be amazing it could be the best installation in mankind's history it could be the worst I don't really know but uh, the bottom line is we're gonna do our best and attempt to improve so speaking of that I think you can kind of see like it's a pretty complex stainless braid there the reason that looks so funky again is because I pushed it out I'm gonna turn around go to my uh, fitting that I have over here I'm going to attempt to slide this over without stabbing myself which is kind of difficult I think I've got it on <laughs> not seated but on I'm gonna try to keep this thumb the good thumb away from all that stainless braid I hope you saw it sort of like press down I'm putting a lot of pressure on there you can probably tell by things turning red and pink and that sucker is seated so what I want to do is just attempt to give you a better look, which that's probably as good as it's going to get, let's be honest. So hopefully you can see that kind of clear white. You know that's going to be our PTFE liner. Uh, this is the aluminum ferrule. It is seated down as far as we can. And then you can see all of the brass there. So... Typically you wouldn't do this. I'm actually planning on backdooring the nut uh, for the simple fact that when I pulled the masking tape off it sort of unraveled. So <laughs> let's see if that was a good idea or a bad idea. Now when you do backdoor things you need to make sure that you have them oriented properly. Uh, case in point, uh, before we do anything with this side, which we very well may trim back, we would want this nut to be oriented like this. However with this one we want it to be oriented this way because it's essentially going to come here, collapse that ferrule for the seal, and thread in. So, this is not my side of a cut, but we're going to, we have widened it out. Probably shouldn't have done that in retrospect. <laughs> so, let's see if we can get this over. We got a lot of hover, wait, oh no. Okay, this is bad. Did not know this was even possible. <laughs> so, we just scrunched the whole thing. And I did not know that was something you could do. And, uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm not too thrilled with that. <laughs> so, I don't know. Maybe we'll just go in this way. And, and this is probably too short now. But I don't know where all that material went. Um, very odd. Like I said, I've never used this. I've got a battery light flashing, too may have to call a night it is pretty late and I'll get work in the morning but that's a bit of a buzzkill so we're gonna go back to the drawing board and see what we come up with all right so still here low battery light you know didn't deter me completely but I went ahead I've never seen that this was so uniform I thought maybe they just cut it that way and taped it uh, it's almost comical what happened to us, but I thought you know what this is probably scrap anyway I just want to see what we can do. I need to know what we can do with PTFE hose So I rewrapped their end here and uh, I my, Finally was able to get this over. I went ahead. I've already pulled the uh, ferrule from our side But if I just kind of baby this and keep pressure on the braid I'm able to sort of like coax this thing down so I think we'll get it in place <laughs> and I don't know why that happened I don't know if that was like an end of roll again that's just how it was delivered to me it's very possible user error I'm not gonna d deny nor <laughs> confirm any stupidity on my part uh, but yeah I've finally got this back where I want it to be and uh, the good news is we're gonna if we can use this at all or at least attempt to use it you know if we collapse the ferrules they're done that's why I have spares sitting right there but at least I know I can get that over and then we'll we'd lose a ton of material there but I pulled this back out even with the tape gone I could not get this braid to stretch and come anywhere close to covering that so I'm not sure what the deal is I have like I said kinda collapsed this stainless back 
but I think what I will do is just fish it back out, see if we can get a feral in, please. All right, so I've got the feral fully seated again. This time we have the tube nut here. And what I'm gonna do is trim some of this away. Now again, having not done this type of hose, I'm assuming it would be similar to AN and what we'd cut away, but I'm at least gonna get like these big runners and see if we can then seat this and maybe even thread it in. I've got like another like, practiced end here. I was seeing if I like their orange color, which by the way, that is orange, not copper. It's supposed to be orange anyway. Um, that's why I ordered one. I was wanting to see what I thought of it. I wish it was more of like a hemi orange, but it's honestly not that bad. Looks about the same on camera as in person, but uh, we'll see that on down the line. However, I could use that to see if I can thread this. So what I'm going to do is get something here, but probably like a magnetic tray that I can just cut this fray into. That way I can just dump that as opposed to have to sweep it off. And sorry for being short, but there's a battery light flashing. All right, still a little battery. It's about 10 o'clock. Probably going to have to call it a night, but I've been pulling this down and it's been going, albeit slowly. What I don't like and the reason I'm going to stop, you might not be able to tell here, if we zoom in and it stays focused, do you see the fragments there? That's the nylon braid. Apparently I did not cut enough. I cut none of the stainless and that could be a mistake, I don't know. But I took a lot, at least what I thought was a lot, of the uh, nylon off of this. I can tell you right now these will cut it. They don't cut it very well. Looks like there's still some there. What cut it phenomenally well, the nylon, mind you, uh, is the little NWS scissors. So that's a, another, another use for those things. But I just don't know, like if I keep just babying this thing down, which, I mean, it's been a long time, rest assured. We get more and more thread exposed, but I'm also getting more and more nylon in the threads, and I don't like that. So, I think I'm going to just knock this off, reseed it, and I guess come in and cut more of the nylon, and try to possibly cut some of the stainless, I don't know. The good news is, I mock this thing up, and we very well might be able to cut back here, and still have it fit. Uh, this is sort of like my learning piece when you're just along for the ride, apparently. But, uh, yeah, things uh, did not quite go as smoothly as I wanted them to tonight. I did have quite a few, kept having people text and call and stuff. But, uh, anywho, I'm going to have to get inside, and uh, we will finish this thing up. It will be in this video, rest assured. But, uh, like I said, it's important, you know, like all the videos you could ever watch, I've never seen anyone have the jacket just you know, slide back with the fitting. Uh, and I realize you say, oh, well, you know, I should have had it on the other side. I agree, but the same thing, even if this side would have been done and it was perfect, this one, when I put that fitting on, it would have just pushed it back too. So I don't know what the deal was there. But <laughs> uh, like I said, it's a learning experience. Uh, first one's usually the most difficult, right? So we'll get this one knocked out and uh, then we should have it down pat. So I will be back on another day with a freshly charged battery. So we'll be right back. All right. So we are back. It has been a while. I've not gotten to look at any of the videos we have on this and uh, subsequently kind of going to just wing it and possibly start from scratch. <laughs> but, uh, it will likely just be piled in behind whatever we have. But uh, anyway, still trying to master the art of PTFE hose ends. And we've got a couple of issues. Uh, number one, of course, you've got basically three components here. You've got the PTFE inner liner. Inside or on top of that, you've got the stainless steel braid. And on top of that, you've got your nylon braid, which if you don't want the stainless steel braid in your engine bay or under your vehicle, if it's just not aesthetically your thing, you're going to need to go with something on top of that. The problem is the stainless braid has to be frayed out a little bit for your ferrule to seat over the Teflon. Uh, that would be this little piece here. Some of you call it an olive. The other issue is it's very difficult to work with this stuff uh, in terms of getting the nut slid over the hose and then the nylon trimmed back but not trimmed back too much and then the stainless is just of course always a pain in the butt to cut but uh, I think between these this one we just had the freak freak thing where that just started unraveling but it's cool because that allowed me to practice cutting and you know spacing everything out 
This one, I think we might have just gone a little too far. It might actually line up, but what my fear is, if I were to assemble this and sacrifice a uh, ferrule, I don't know that this would stay intact inside the tube nut. It's just kind of an unknown. Luckily, we bought a lot of hose, and we're going to cut another piece and just kind of start from scratch and see if the third time is the charm. So, um... I'm pretty content with that length, so what I want to do is mirror that. This is my tape from a previous cut, and we're just going to lay this out. I am then going to tape in the center. Uh, something I have figured out along this little you know, trial process is to only wrap once. If you start just tons and tons of tape, that's awesome. It's less likely that it's going to fray. Depending, you know, painter's tape is the most forgiving. If you're using like a a more aggressive tape you're probably gonna rip the braid up and have it fray on you which is not good the other thing in order to get the tube nut onto your piece of hose you need as minimal amount of tape as possible so basically I'm gonna do like a wrap and we're gonna see how that goes this time so weapon of choice for cutting is going to be right here this is basically all I've got that will cut the hose uh, these are just uh, cable shears from channel lock they work really good I hate using them for stuff like this because the stainless will prematurely wear the blades. At the same time, even with the code blue handles, which are an upgrade, these are like sub $30. You can get the dipped handle version probably for around $19 to $20, you know. Um, other options, if you've got a whiz wheel, that would work good. Uh, chop saw seems kind of overkill, but it actually does cut decent. Uh, keep in mind when you cut that, you know, you're going through Teflon, you're going through stainless, you're going through nylon braid, however you want to uh, prepare for that and uh, set yourself up to clean it. Uh, be sure to factor that in. But for me, we're just going to go with these. Obviously, a larger pair of cable shears. The bigger the shears, the more leverage you have, the easier it is to cut this stuff. <laughs> you know, the more likely you are to make a clean cut in one stroke of the tool as opposed to, you know, maybe having to spin it around and cut two or three times kind of pinch and go type of a thing so uh that said i'm not going to work to grab some cable shears we're just going to work with what we've got these have served me well so far so i'm going to stretch that out match it tape it and cut it all right so here we are if you note that's roughly in the middle again i think there's a bit of flex here in the hose that we can uh, use to our advantage i'm going to awkwardly attempt to cut this keep in mind tripod will greatly complicate things <laughs> but we're gonna come in center it just I actually want a little bit over that's always better to do that so we're gonna come in and we're just going to the channel locks do their thing so I mean like I said small cable shears but it is going through nylon it's going through stainless it's going through Teflon and it does it fairly easily given the size as I retrieve my hose from the end, we've got two ends. One of these would have been cut last time. One of these would have been cut this time. Note what the hose looks like, right? That's not cylindrical. That is round. That's kind of more of a cat eye, right? This side over here is more of a diamond shape. That's not good. That's not fuel flow. This is one of the downsides of using this type of a shear, obviously however small however big you're going to have the same crushing effect on your hose what I have done is created a tool that was not intended for this that has multiple purposes but uh, what I have found is a drift pin or a drift punch right here uh, you could use a center punch just be leery you don't want to you know jab the side wall of the hose this is from Ghidorah all right part number is 99-10-5 that took an eternity of focus all I'm gonna do is take the end Let's pan back up. <laughs> if we can, it's kind of hard holding everything. Pan back out, and as we drive this in, that's actually going to round the tube back to a cylindrical shape, which is what we want. Again, especially here, this is really bad. So we're going to come in, that goes right in, and boom. Just like that, you're kind of back in shape. You can play with it some more if you want to. But we've got this taken care of. Now, What's imperative that we do right now while everything is taped, this is why it's important we don't lather on the tape. Uh, if you want to use a trial experience for yourself, by all means, go ahead and do that. Find what works best for you. But based on my previous two attempts, 
less is best with the tape as you can see it's not like anything freed out major we could have wrapped this 17 times and it would have had this same cut so we're gonna come in and obviously you, know, you gotta think a little bit beforehand you've got your hose here in our case it's a crossover so we've got our fittings that are gonna be over here and that means we want the nuts to be able to thread onto the fittings so shortest resistance here take this nut slide it over and then we'll have the nut to thread onto the fitting same thing here in this case though this fitting is going to do the opposite so basically threads facing out uh, if you go in the wrong way you either have to pull it back off when you res run a severe risk of having something go wrong or you have to run it all the way down and again i found that the braid on this stuff that may not be a good thing. If it's a small, small piece, you might be able to pull it off. The longer, uh, the less enjoyable of a process that will be. So we're going to come in. Keep in mind, these stainless fragments are sharp. They will stick in you. That's what they're supposed to do. That's what they will always do. We want to just get this started. Once it's started, you got two options. You can just push straight down on a solid surface. You can kind of do the twist and turn type of a thing. I'm going to attempt to twist it just a little bit. You can kind of see it coming through there. You can again see the diamond shape of the Teflon, which we'll correct in a little bit. But with the tripod, it's super weird. I don't know if you can see this great. I really want you to. Um, the tape right there, and this is another thing. I'm not sure. We may have to have a fourth attempt. I like the tape on because this is insanely tight. It would be insanely tight without the tape. If I take the tape off, we run the risk of having this happen where the stainless braid just gets pushed, or the nylon braid, I should say, gets pushed back. So if you watch the blue masking tape, you will see it sink into the fitting. I think I'm trying to get my hands to where you can actually see that. And it's super difficult with the tripod. But you get the idea, that's coming through and the tape is sinking. So I'm gonna come around here. If you can twist at the same time, that would be great. We've basically bottomed out with our flat surface. So now, this is where we would go over to the vice jaws if possible. But we, are going to keep spinning that. Uh, the other tube nuts will come over here. I'm going to extract this guy because again I think this might be too much. Come on. Hope you heard that satisfying release. <laughs> so got that one on. We are now going to attempt to do the same here. The stainless braid is really what you've got to watch out for not just for your own safety uh, but you don't want to gall up the threads and I, I'm also trying to make this round to fit into the tube nut oh boy very humid today so got her started by hand uh, this is my good thumb we're gonna do that we're gonna twist a little and let's see if we can press again if you can see it pay attention to the masking tape And this one is failing, failing terribly. So this is what constantly, one of the two seems to always do this. In this case, I'm just gonna rip it off. It's pushing, we didn't have it like this to begin with, right? This was all uniform and roughly the same distance. As we try to put this on, it's actually pushing the nylon braid up. And in this case, the stainless is going with it, so uh, it's kind of like if you think of a Chinese finger trap, you know, and you contract it and it sprays out. That's sort of what's happening here. So, uh, there's a chance I could collapse this by hand and get it kind of back in into position for us. There's also a chance that this would just be a total fail again. And that's unfortunate, but I think it's the stainless. In this case, it's just causing causing all of our trouble. So... This is what you constantly run into playing around with this stuff, and it's extremely unfortunate. But again, I kind of think this might be a lost cause at this point. If we were to take an olive and press it on, I 
Like, I mean, that's almost perfect, but at the same time, I think we need more of the stainless uh, to cover that to make a good seal. I could totally be mistaken, uh, but the biggest issue right now is we don't have a tube nut on, so it's kind of a moot point. So I'm going to go off camera, this is what happens, and I'm going to see if I can maybe get the nut to seat on this. I should have kept filming, all I did is move the tripod and pull this masking tape off. As soon as I did, this is what you're left with, it's just the nylon braid is the problem. Uh, it's technically the stainless that I think was catching and not allowing it to push, and then everything just kind of shoehorns back. And we have the exact same thing happen that happened with this piece. Now this was not the end I cut, this was the uh, end they cut. It's actually a very square cut, but that's what happened. You know, this just scrunched back like this, and then you can never restore that. You know, I don't work at a loom, I'm not gonna waste my time trying to make that happen. Uh, this is <clears throat> unfortunate because I think we have this down now but as you can see like we got this to go on just fine and then this side it was trying to seat the tube nut and it just it did the thing where this scrunches <laughs> and uh, I think it scrunched because of the stainless but it's just extremely unfortunate now the other side of this tool um, and the reason I call it a tool I have driven it into a ferrule and what that would do which I can exhibit here for you is I can not only seat this to round the uh, Teflon liner out but when I put this in place it actually drives the ferrule into position and will spread the stainless steel so uh, this is actually very functional and practical and probably an upgrade over the expensive $50 pieces of junk they sell you that do the same thing uh, and by the way, even though that's a German-made drift punch, you can get it for probably like five bucks, so keep that in mind. But, uh, and it is, that would be ideal for what I'm doing dash six. Dash eight, you might have to jump up, you know, so on and so forth, you're scaling down. But uh, that was our fail here, is this, and I don't know if I can cut the hose down and go to town, or if we're gonna have to just start afresh again. So this seems to be the issue is just getting the nut onto this uh, nylon braid with the stainless there. It's super tight, like in a perfect world, like this is fine, this was perfect. This is super ridiculously tight. The plan would have been to continue to pull that up, probably at the vise, and then we would simply come in, pull the masking tape, then slide this back down, get it into our fitting, and go to town in that manner. But, uh, I don't know. It's just, it's one of those things, I think if we had, like, I hate the looks of it, but there's, like, the nasty-looking black liner PTFE. Uh, a lot of that is, like, for uh, static electricity, as weird as that may seem to you. Just, we're not even into that yet, just, just run with me. <laughs> and... The perk of it is, though, is like that's a flat, smooth, like applied surface. This isn't a braided surface, and so I don't think you would have the issues like this. This looks way better, especially with the blue check like Hot Rod Fuel Hose does. You can match it to your color scheme. Working with it is not near as pleasant. I'm thinking if we had that uh, other type of PTFE or even just a stainless liner one, we'd be done like the first time. Uh, but it's the nylon braid coupled with the stainless that's giving us tons of stupid little issues, which again, we did this one first, it's perfect. You know, we could have come in and foolishly pulled this, got the masking tape off, trimmed it, got it ready for the fitting, and then we would have still had this happen. So, it's annoying, it's a learning process. Um, right now, there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason as to when this is going to split, but I'm going to run with the assumption that what caused this to fail was the stainless just was a little too big from the cut, I guess. Um, I don't know, but back to the drawing board, and I guess we'll, uh, we'll see if we can salvage this one, maybe shorten it a little, and if we can't, I don't know, I just, I feel like that might be too far, too far scrunched, you know what I mean? So, I'll try to figure something out, and we'll be back. Alright, so I assume when you make mistakes and have fails, you should at least play with them and try to learn more, so that's what I'm doing. I have ordered a long time ago a pair of a dedicated 7-inch with the soft jaws. The problem is the soft jaws aren't here. should have plenty of capacity with them because with this, it's, I want to say close to 3 quarters of an inch socket you would need. Uh, but again, you don't want to mar your fittings up, so <clears throat> this is kind of a stretch. 
<laughs> using these 250s uh, be roughly 10 inches right it's a stretch but look what we've been able to do by just coming in and sliding this around I'm able to get the masking tape since this is just a probably a lost cause we're gonna go all the way I think you can tell but like right there's the end of the masking tape <clears throat> so this sucker this fitting is on this is what I was going for had this end not have failed on us so what I'm gonna do now <clears throat> is go over to the motor and uh, we'll try to round this out I might have to get a different drift punch I think it works best when you can get a little deeper than this but again this little tool here ooh, that's got potential so what we're gonna do is uh, see if I can get this comfortably fitted and then maybe be able to trim back to here and see if we can salvage this piece otherwise we have like another yay long piece that's just sitting around waiting for to possibly be used later all right so just so you don't feel left out of the madness this is what i'm talking about again i'm replicating this off of what the factory did they had the arch in it between the uh, fuel rails if you will the thing that we could do <clears throat> then would make these and the other pieces both salvageable we'd have three attempts what we've already cut is turn these 90s down all the way to where they just face straight into one another the issue with that I don't like the proximity to the distributor uh, we could potentially shorten this a little bit I do have a uh, union right here out of the rail into this fitting that way the fitting can come off without having to disturb the rail in my opinion that was better however if we paid way more money for a 90 degree <laughs> It was mail thread on this end with an ORB, which we're getting into a lot of a lot of expense there. Which I don't even know that Hot Rod Fuel Hose has that. Um, and then we'd run into an issue as is the line compatible type of thing. Maybe we could move that back in. Just I'm talking fractions, just past where that union is, basically. But I feel like this is pretty solid. I might come in, and again that scrunch effect. I mean, it goes back in past this hash right there but I guess for the sake of trying I might trim this back and see if we can salvage it but again that's kind of what we're doing for so I'll see what I can do and we will uh, report back all right so I don't know if you can tell what happened based on what you may or may not see on the table but trying to salvage this one piece they made a terrible cut uh, the stainless was getting in the way and then the braid uh, again I think this is all because it was scrunched and uh, that's sort of what we run into there but this is a side that was cut you can kind of see again I think that's probably where it was rolled into itself and the problem now is going to be that we've got a situation where we've collapsed the tube but again that's easily remedied with a drift punch I mean that's really really efficient there to fix it the problem is we've got some stainless hanging and this is already splayed out we do not want that it's prematurely done uh, again the issue we had was trying to get this tube nut on and I think the stainless that we're already catching was causing problems we're gonna move in now and we're going to trim stainless always wear safety glasses this crud goes flying <laughs> but a uh, whole video on this but these right here the Knipex X cuts are going to be phenomenal for trimming the stainless the little NWS scissors there the needle nose ones those work really good for cutting the nylon but uh, what I'm gonna do is kinda like try to get this dressed up like you probably can't see it but there's the little stray runner of stainless there just kind of a nightmare but again this is simply trying to salvage this piece at this length again if it was way shorter it'd probably be fine but again we're having to work with space constraints and go too much shorter and we have a nullified piece for this project so I'm gonna spend some time dressing this up we'll see how it goes alright so I've been trimming this it's just a lost cause that stainless is too far out and you just cannot get the tube nut started so I've taken another thin run of our, uh, you can look at the carnage here on the blade, that blue streak there that looks like nylon, it's it's from the nylon. So what we're going to do is come in just as close as I can to the edge here. I'm hoping that we're back in territory that can be cut. And I'm going to seat this as deep as we can in the jaws. And we're going to square that up. We're going to cut. Yeah, these are... Uh, reaching reaching the limit I'm afraid so 
Let's see. All right. I don't know. It just it's collapsed, of course. So again, that's an easy remedy here. We'll just kind of round the tube back out. It's the stainless that I again worry about. So what we can do just to showcase some things that I mean we're figuring this out. It's just uh, ridiculously complicated. <laughs> so the scissors work beautifully for the nylon. You don't want to cut stainless with them, but all that excess nylon these make super quick work of. They're actually way better than the side cutters that will cut the stainless for this. I think this one's probably a lost cause. I don't know if I'm gonna fire up the air compressor. Um, I thought about buying a tiny little chop saw for this. I'm talking like the little, I don't even know, two to six inch range. It looks like a toy. It would be really good for bolts, threaded rod, smooth rod, and stuff like this where this seems ridiculous to put on a 14 inch chop saw. At the same time, the problem I have is the little guys that would be like ideally sized for this and bolts and the aforementioned, you know, spacers, anything, you know, like this, it would be awesome, sized great for it. The issue is you pay like 50 to 80 bucks for those and you can get a 14 inch chop saw for not much more. <laughs> and you know, that opens up a lot more versatility. You know, if you want to cut angle iron, square tube, whatever, you're not going to do it with your tiny little chop saw, but the 14 inch will do it. So, I don't know. Maybe we just continue playing with this one and I try like a hacksaw, which I'm thinking would be a nightmare once you get into the stainless. Um, there's rotary tools. Again, I can fire up the air compressor, but it's. You know, like this one was perfect, and then this other side was just a nightmare. And again, every time we're cutting this now, we're getting the stainless just kind of spreading out. And again, that's why we can't slide the tube bent over, and that's what's giving us trouble. So uh, I'll continue trying to find something that functions and keep you posted. I'm thinking, based on multiple fails now with these, we're going to have to move on now. Again, to their credit, they've been used on a ton of stuff. These little guys right here. The NWS cable shears. I attempted it with them first on my very first try. They don't get anywhere near cutting through this. Instead of trash these blades, in case we've done that there, I tried to keep these back. But I mean, it's just anytime there's something stainless, you uh, you run into nightmares like this. So I'll. Uh, Keep trying to figure something out and keep you posted. All right, so ignoring this train wreck of stuff, one thing we're gonna do that will make real progress. I've got this Heiko oil bottle, which spoiler alert, I bought a Ghidorah one that came in earlier this week. I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. Heiko is gonna have the branding sticker, the Ghidorah doesn't. You know, pick your poison, that sticker's about to come off anyway. I've already labeled this anytime you put substances I don't care if it's like a, a goldenrod oiler, I don't care if it's, you know, a turquoise one from Harbor Freight that you know is just going to be transmission fluid, I don't care if it's little stuff like this. Take the time to label it, you know, years, I mean, it doesn't even have to be years, you know, if you're using this right now and you're making PTFE hose ends, you're going to know like, oh hey, you know, that's my, that's my assembly lube. Think about, you know, like two weeks down the line when you might have two of these things, right? Are you going to be in a position where you're like, oh, hey, you know, uh, was this was this motor oil or was this my assembly lube? And was this breaking stuff or is this Earl's, you know, and you're not going to know. <laughs> so be smart about it and just take like the extra 10 seconds and write down what it is. So this right here should be an upgrade for threaded ends. Uh, from the reviews I've read, these little things don't leak which is good, but uh, this wasn't terrible. It's just you got the whole bottle behind you and having less mass, you know, less liquid <laughs> weighing down on you should be golden. Let's go ahead. This has been a train wreck of a day. It's not leaking. I'm putting light pressure, so no, no spill here, no spill there. I think we're home free. We're going to call that a win. At least something good has happened so far. I think my uh, mom and sister might be going to go pick up Chipotle while me and my nephew hang out here. So I guess that's uh, another perk. Maybe things will turn around. But <laughs> yeah, we at least got this part done. And this will probably be interjected somewhere in the video and make no sense. But trust me, things have not been going well. And that at least got accomplished. So it's kind of a win.
Alright, I have no idea if this is going to work or not, but I've been playing around just off camera here and there, started some other projects because this is ridiculously complex, <laughs> nothing seeming to work. Uh, one side's perfect, the other side's not, but anyway, we have this guy, and what I was trying to do is find a way to actually seat the nuts without moving the braid, and I've trimmed it, I think, twice now. Uh, the last piece was actually a pretty good cut, went down there. I'm thinking as these have dulled from going through the stainless, if you come around and you kind of do the 90 degree turn every single time, you'll be left with like a diamond shape, sort of something like that. I think one of the keys I've discovered at that point in time, don't round it out, don't you dare round it out, <laughs> get it back to concentric, go ahead and put your tube nut on at that point in time when it's like flattened, it's far easier to get the tube nut on. I've also noticed it's easier to start the tube nuts from the opposite side, meaning here where I have the threads facing out as they should, it's sometimes easier to actually slide this guy in from the back way. I guess it just naturally compresses, you know, the fibers, the stainless braid and the nylon and everything easier. Problem is, if you do that there, we can't then have this guy come in from that side, right? You only have one, one road here and there's only room for one nut. So, um... When you make your cut, I would put the tube nuts on. If you have trouble there, I would just do one from the other side. Then when you have the cut again, I would do everything you can to get it on there. This looks like it may work. I've got a lot of nylon there. Some of it may have to be trimmed. Uh, this is a little shorter than I wanted it to be, but at this point in time, if I could just get this thing to function, that would be wonderful. Uh, so I've used my little drift punch with this to sort of seat the, uh, you know, Essentially, you know, take a, a dummy ferrule and spread the stainless out. Uh, it works really, really well. But uh, what I guess I'm going to do, and I'm thinking we should probably trim some of the braid away, but I might seat the ferrules first, which I can kind of rough that in place. I wonder if we can't just drive it with this one. Looks like we can. That's pretty square I don't think you can see that well uh, the other there's one hidden right here uh, we'll just go ahead and sort of press this one into position and then see if we can do the same thing oh yeah you can feel that seat which is cool so we've gotten it to this point obviously now we would be ready for our assembly lube over there in the little Heiko oil uh, bottle and we would want to put this in and get this slid down and start threading. I want to say we're going to for sure need to get rid of this nylon. Don't hold me to that, but I'm going to go off camera, play around with it, and who knows, maybe we'll get lucky. Alright, so I'm going to take this one side at a time. I've blown this out as best I can. We'll probably uh, pressure test it and get like a washout kit. But, what we have here is the tube nut coming down. We've slid this 90 into position, and if you note... The area there that's black that's got thread on it right and there's no stainless and there's no nylon so I'm going to continue spinning this guy down <laughs> and it looks like it's ready to go so we're gonna oil it I'm gonna turn as much of this by hand as I can and then I guess if we need to we'll head over to the vise well, all right it's uh, kind of a mess I did actually clean the vise up one of the rainy nights I got stuck out here just polished everything not that it matters <laughs> but uh, the story goes, you need a one millimeter gap. So we got our feeler gauges here from Stavilla, and that's basically, there's a little bit more than that, but I've got it lined up. You know, it's a six sided deal for aesthetics. I'm assuming it's okay. It's starting to crunch a little, and having never really assembled these, I don't know if that is, I'm assuming it's stainless, which uh, the thing is, they say that you want stainless on top of the ferrule for the compression. I don't exactly see why that's necessary personally, but that's what we're rolling with. Now, the first one did not go as smooth, and by first I mean the other side. The soft jaws from Knipex, oh yeah, that's that's a lot of wear and tear on those. What happens, and the reason I switched to the Stavilla, the start to... Uh, grab and then they slip because so much force is required to actually turn this. I've never, never understood if you're supposed to just have this spin in place you know, like a nut on a bolt type of a deal. Uh, like if it's a loose fitting, like right here, I happen to have some. You know, like when there's no line there, like this is a bad example because it's swivel and I'm one-handed, but I mean, that just threads effortlessly, right? 
These start effortlessly sometimes, but then it's a nightmare and it requires a lot of leverage. <laughs> and uh, if I can back this out and also the vice jaws, I've never been happy with them. I don't know if it's the vice jaws or my vice. I would assume they should fit better than this and they don't. But uh, right here, and I mean, this blue nut has not been in anything aside from these vice jaws, and it's tearing the finish off of it, and these are supposed to be soft. You know, they're aluminum, they're not supposed to do that. And yet you can see right there where it's clamping, it does that. And they don't adhere well, they fall off a lot. Uh, if you take this landing pad out, it actually fits worse because it's, you know, got the L-shaped, you know, terrain there for your jaws to go. So it's just kind of a, a dumb, bad setup, but there is this side, I think, that we just did, because it's lined up this side, not so much, and it got torn up too. I'm uh, really not happy with the way any of this is going, but I think we're sort of figuring it out, and uh, I'm going to try... This is the one we just did, because the gap is a lot tighter. This is the one that, I mean, it got like absurdly difficult and I thought, well, you know, let me try my hand at the other one. So what I'm going to do is try to tighten that up. Uh, I'm obviously, both sides are just totally a loss in terms of maintaining the aesthetics. And we're doing everything. We use soft jaws, we use clean jaws, we use the uh, <laughs> fittings and the vise specifically designed for this stuff, and we still get screwed, so uh, I don't know, again, no one ever elaborates on this, you know, like if it just threads together, and if it doesn't, you've got problems, or if, you know, everyone sits there with a 36 inch wrench and spins it, you know, and does it off camera, I don't know, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead, these are shot in terms of aesthetics anyway, so functionality, they're fine, and the ferrule, assuming it's okay, you know, you'll have to reuse that if you were to take this apart, Threads on the nuts sort of depend on if there's any stainless in there. You don't know unless you take it apart. So I'm just going to go ahead and tighten this thing down, try to get it lined up with the other one, and then ultimately we'll clean it out and pressure test it when those pieces arrive. All right, so right there, not sure how well you're going to be able to tell it. Again, we just have just a little bit more than a one millimeter gap. I'm going to call this good until we can clean it and pressure test it. I'm going to see if this will actually crossover for us and then we'll just take it from there well this is possibly coming to an end and i couldn't be more thrilled so uh somehow we finally got this stuff to work i'm not sure if stainless has damaged the threads <laughs> but basically what's gonna have to happen is i'm waiting i'll go in tonight and order a, another fitting i need for the factory connection turns out i need a 45 instead of a 90 and you'll see that, I guess, in another video. Uh, and then, because I've got, like, multiple parts that have been edited and uploaded and ready to go, but this was, like, the holdup this whole time. <laughs> so, uh, this is in place, though. And like I said, I want to wash it out. Obviously, it's important. You know, you got fuel injectors here. That's about as fine as you'll get, you know, in terms of a late model vehicle. Then... We've got a situation where I also want to pressure test it, and I'll get the washout kit and the pressure test ordered. Uh, might just do the pressure test and just like run water through it, not 100% sure. But anyway, I want to make sure this is golden because again, when we install the motor, this disappears way underneath the cowl of the truck, and that's not prime working conditions, and I'm aware of that, so I'm trying to take care of it while it is accessible. So we've got it in place. The thing is, I have this here, and it's designed for, you know, technically like a gauge, but you can also put a Schrader valve in to, you know, relieve fuel pressure. I would think it should go on this side. The inlet would be over here on the driver's side, right? And then this would be here. If I run this off of our fitting there, I run into a situation where then when we have even this 90, it's basically like touching the plug wire, and I'm not a fan of that and I, I can't like relocate the distributor nor can I move the fuel rails type of a thing uh, it could go over here but I'm not 100% sure I guess I might like I guess we could quickly mock that up again none of this is like final tight it's just me messing around with everything so let's see it's a little difficult bear with me one hand man here but uh, obviously we would want the trader valve facing up for ease of service and since these are swivel fittings, we might 
be able to make it work. And like I could, uh, I could turn this, you know. Okay, so I don't want to like strip any threads out, but even then, coming in to this side to circumvent hitting the spark plug wires on the driver's side, it's weird. And then it turns out these are not level either. I think you can probably tell. Like this side of the intake is up much higher than that side. So it's a little bit funky and I don't like this angle on our line at all. And I also don't really want to run something of equal distance there to space it out, especially again because of the distributor. So I don't really know. I might, uh, might email Hypotech and see what he suggests. I also don't know that I would have to run this. Uh, obviously it would be nice, I guess, if I was going to service the truck. I could pull the coil wire or something and just crank it and try to get all the fuel evacuated, you know, from the uh, injectors or rails or something. Or I guess we could just barely crack one of these and hope nothing bad happens. <laughs> Gas sprays towards the radiator on a cool truck. We would, we would at least be that smart, I hope. But yeah, I don't really know. This is all kind of up in the air. But like I said, this is, I think, part 43, and it's been a nightmare. And it's taken way too long and way too much time. And essentially, I'll update you way later now, because again, I've got 44, 5, and 6 literally edited and uploaded. But what's on this rail that you may not be aware of is right here in line, of course, with vacuum ports is an ORB port. That is where we can use a series of fittings to connect to the factory quick disconnect, right? So, uh, none of that is installed. If I bring you back to this table, I was playing around with this the other day. This fitting right here is a uh, Dash 6 ORB. I don't have the O-ring in, it's right there. And then I had this 90, and then we would basically run this guy, right? And the problem is we would need a 45 to do that. I was originally going to have this run into one of these port adapters. Obviously that side has the female and then it would work here. I might wind up doing that again. I really don't know. It's honestly all up in the air, but I'm just glad to finally be done with this. I think maybe I was being like too much of a perfectionist with it. Uh, might have been the problem. The other thing, we just had a lot of issues, not necessarily with the assembly, we never even tried that until now, and that part went fine, but like, just the nylon sort of just unraveling as we would have it taped and try to push a nut over it. So, little things like that, you know, when you're first kind of teaching yourself a new product and everything. Uh, moving forward, obviously, if you don't care about the aesthetics of a nylon braid where you can have the colored hashes and things, which looks super cool, if you just ran stainless, I think it'd be really easy. Also, there's coatings that I think the tube nuts and fittings would go over much, much easier and would eliminate a lot of the headache that you run into. And then, again, all the stuff I find online, I never see anyone that actually articulates and explains and showcases you know like do you have the stainless over the entire ferrule do you have it over part of the ferrule do you trim it back and not even have it over the ferrule and then the stainless is just pushed in by the connection between the tube nut and the fitting none of that's really explained and for me to learn by trial and error that's the piece that we have over here and so i guess when we pressure test it we'll sort of get a feel for how well we did at some point in time, because I was really, I love the concept of PTFE and what it's impervious to. It's basically like an idiot-proof fuel for whatever crud you have, you know. Uh, Ethanol-based fuel, you know, mixed, straight unleaded. Uh, if you want to come in, if you want to run like Avgas, if you want to run race fuel, if you want to run methane, uh, if you want to run ethanol, E85, whatever, you can pretty much run it all through this. It's also great for other fluids. It's really, really got some benefits. Working with the nylon braided version initially, again, maybe I was like too picky and, you know, should have just run with my first attempt and probably had it go because I think the one we used was my first one. I really, I can't tell you because I don't know. And um, I think what I will do to make up for this train wreck of a video, eventually, once the truck is put back together and running and we're working on some other stuff, at that point in time, I'll probably do like a proper tutorial on PTFE. This gives you like the rough idea, I think. <laughs> and uh, 
like I said, we will know more when we pressure test this and we'll wash it out. And then, like I said, we'll be prepped and better equipped to actually sit down, say, hey, there's our connection A, here's connection B. We need to make a line that goes from A to B. Here's the fittings we need. Here's how we cut the line. Here's how we prep the line. Here's how we do it. I honestly think I understand it. I just don't know the finite details of like how much nylon to leave, how much stainless to leave, how much stainless, if any, is required to make the seal you know, proper. Little things like that turn out to be really important. And again, right now I'm just having to go by trial and error. So the pressure tests, we're going to be smart enough to do that. So we don't like throw the motor in the truck, fire it up, think, man, this thing sounds awesome. Can't wait to go drive it. And we're squirting fuel. <laughs> you know, that would be terrible. Uh, you've got headers here. You've got stuff that's going to get hot. You would not, not be good. You don't want to burn your vehicle to the ground after all this time. So bottom line, my apologies. I don't even know. There's so many attempts on this i'm not sure what all all i'll even showcase but uh that's why you buy a lot of line more than you think you'll need so you can practice and derp around but uh, like i said we will eventually do a proper tutorial and that should help people out but i think this actually does cover it. it's just again the finite stuff i don't know the answer to you because it's it's not available and until i test this and know if it works i can't tell you if i even did it correctly i think i tried to to the best of my knowledge but i don't know if it's gonna pan out or not so the good news is in terms of this stuff i've got enough still quite a bit to play around with we really didn't use much but it just sucks you know you don't know, hate throwing some away uh when you don't have to so we'll keep all the little pieces in case we can use them for crossovers or to fuel filter runs or something like that but that's it that's memorial day i wanted the the motor in the truck today but I was held up by this, and then I don't want to put it in until I've pressure tested this and until I've gotten the driver side quick connect set up. So just mainly making it easier on myself. But with that said, LoneStarMopars.com is the website. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all three at Lone Star Mopars. As always, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully this did something for you. I'm not sure what, but hopefully it did something. <laughs> <laughs> so entertains you puts you to sleep gives you gives you a little information or insights on this and who knows maybe we knocked it out of the park i like i said i'll let you know when i find out so uh with that said it looks decent you know when it's like squared up a little better without this little port uh, for our schrader valve but i'll check in on that we will update you at that point in time i'm probably going to go like detail more in the engine bay because again I'm ordering the fittings tonight. They'll ship out Tuesday. Hopefully we have them later in the week. We can call it good and uh, get ready to drop this thing in maybe this coming weekend. So that'll be awesome. But uh, Memorial Day again, you know, it's sort of like an unofficial kickoff to summer. There's no school. There's no work. There's cookouts, good times, all that stuff. Enjoy it. But at the same time, you know, be mindful. You know, there's people that don't get to come home and do that. You know, there's people that never got to enjoy another one. Uh, they gave their lives in the line of duty so we could all sit around and have giant barbecues and bashes and do crazy stuff with, you know, four-wheel drive trucks and fast cars and all that good Americana freedom stuff, right? Uh, of course, thanks to all veterans, but again, uh, some people don't come home, and uh, to them we should forever be grateful. But uh, I don't think you see enough of that. You get the negative all the time. Uh, but you, n you never get the uh, what people should be grateful for, regardless of anything else you care about. You know, whatever your political affiliation uh, and what all causes and crud you're into, you wouldn't be able to do that stuff if it weren't for people that had fought and, uh, like I said, paid the ultimate price for all of us to still be here. But on that note, I will quit rambling. Hope you enjoy your Memorial Day. Hopefully this train wreck of a video was helpful. I promise we'll come back. I'll cover... <laughs> whether it was a train wreck completely or functional. Uh, I might order some more fittings just in case I totally screwed up. Uh, more on that later. But like I said, you'll see a follow-up to this, and then eventually I will do my best to get a proper tutorial out for you. So stay tuned for that. I will catch you back here for the next installment of the Ram Revival.